Oh, hello friends. You know, looks like I'm driving again. Well, this has been one of those days. So today I had uh, plans to go to the range and short session today. Um, my wife and one of the boys were going somewhere. I don't remember where. A museum, that's right. They had this planned trip. Anyway, I had to be back by you know noon or so and rushed down to the range first thing this morning only to find out that they were short of volunteer and there was no um, range officer present so they couldn't open the rifle range <laughs> so I waited around for a little bit but there was no real option and I couldn't volunteer because then I couldn't shoot myself so uh, like shoot you know what I mean uh, so I basically had to leave and then my wife and son were about to go and only to find out that the museum has changed its hours and uh, it's closed on Sunday. So here it is, one o'clock in the afternoon and I'm bombing back to the range. And thankfully it's not too far. It's only about a 20 or 25 minute drive. I guess that's far. Anyway, I was talking about fuel earlier and uh, here I am wasting fuel. But I really have to go today because I have to get this lake field sighted in because I don't have a chance this week to go to the range and my wife's in school, sorry, working because of school next Saturday and the um, match training day is next Sunday. So I don't have another opportunity to sight this gun in. So um, I really, really wanted to go today. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do uh, not being able to shoot today. So I'm going to take off there for a couple hours and see what I can get done and hopefully I can get it at least sighted in and at least show up to this training day with kind of an idea on what's happening. And that's if the lake field performs. It's uh, dismal normally, so I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't really know other than that. So anyway, I'll pause it here because it's just more driving and I'll check in with you guys when I actually get set up again. Hello friends. So got the lake field out today. Beautiful rifle. And um, it's shooting some amazing groups. So I'll show you guys later, but they're Anschutz 54 level. Seriously. Although, and my extraction, ejection, the best it's ever been. Amazing, not flawless. However, I'm having this intermittent light strike problem. And it seemed to be originally only with Ely, which I, you know, I regularly have problems with different Ely's. They have very hard brass. But then I get some with SK, which I never have problems with SK. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what that could be. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know. It's super frustrating because it's shooting phenomenally well. And like this is the first time I've had a big scope on it. Uh, I've had smaller scope, like I mentioned, but uh, it's something else I, I have to fig figure out. Which, like, I don't, I don't mind figuring stuff out, but uh, I kind of just like to shoot this because, man, is it shooting? And um, I figured out that it likes an extremely tight hold. And I know that um, I know that from before. That it like the tight hold, uh, which is exhausting to shoot in a way. Like, oh, I have to get this figured out. Um, I'm playing around with, you know, just some ammo that I brought. I remember it like the Ely, so I brought a lot of Ely, and it's giving me trouble, so that's always a way. And, and I didn't bring a lot of other things, so I only brought a little bit of standard velocity, but it seems to be just liking that and not giving me problems. So, but I don't remember it liking CCI before, but.
really tight grip. Back into my shoulder. Like pulling it right back. Which is a technique, but you have to shoot quickly because you start to shake, right? So, I haven't had one issue with CCS standard velocity. I'm not just saying that because I always seem to shoot it. It just, like, it is what it is. But I've had many with um, Ely today, and its favorite ammo was contact, uh, smallest group of the day has been contact, but then I had constant problems. And you can see my ejection extraction is ace. The groups aren't as tight with CCI center velocity, but they're good. Well, I shouldn't say that. They're good. Right. Plus, I'm talking to you guys, so. Uh. I got to figure out the light strikes. Uh, maybe I should order a Mark II. Refresher kit, firing pin, firing pin spring, all that. That might be in order. I'm not sure. <laughs> See, just extraction is making my day. Because it used to just fall right back in all the time. And now it's going like clear over the bench almost. Like Jesus. I think I'm about to do a ceasefire. I gotta change my target anyway, but um, I'm gonna show you guys some of those groups. Hey everybody, how's it going? I uh, thought I'd show you guys the groups from today's session, and uh, but first and foremost, um, the backdrop today is not the lake field. It's a beautiful Engine 64. <laughs> I had it out, uh, moving some stuff around, and I thought I'd leave it out uh, just because it's so pretty to look at. Anyway, um, in my previous sections of this video, I mentioned the light strikes, and I, before I forget, I thought I'd mention that I saved all the ammunition that wouldn't... Um, go off in the lake field and because i brought the vickers i tried in the vickers and every single round fired properly in the vickers without issue um, even some of them that i had tried multiple positions of the round and several attempts with no luck um, i saved them all they all went off without hitch in the vickers i just wanted to throw that up there so I definitely have a light strike issue, which I had before, and like I touched on it a little bit, but before when the extraction ejection issues were a real annoying factor of shooting this gun, um, things were slow because it was falling back in. And so like uh, today when it was seamless, it seemed like it was happening more often, but I really don't think it was. I think it was happening just about the same amount of time, but because I was able to shoot the gun, the rounds faster, scope instead of apertures, no extra extraction ejection issues so things were happening quicker i think it kind of felt like that but i would say once per mag or more maybe twice every so often with uh all ely and i had one or two with sk and then pretty much none with um cci standard velocity cci ar and cci blazer that's pretty much all i had time for today and like i said i brought mostly ely because that's what the gun liked and uh, i kind of didn't pre didn't remember or predict that this light strike would be such an issue, so I really didn't try too much ELE because it was a failure. 
But anyway, so I'll show you guys this real quick. Uh, I kept two pages and did some averages for you, and um, the results are certainly very interesting. So that's my cider, my first group of the, the day here. And uh, I also want to add that um, I played around a lot with these groups with hold. And the more I shot, the more I realized it's a very big gorilla hold into my shoulder and with full weight of my, my head on the buttstock like pressing into the rear bag. Probably one of the firmest grips I've ever had to shoot a rifle uh, is this one. Very, very, very firm hold. So you'll see like a group like this and then a group like this and a group like this. This is explainable due to hold. And so when you let the rifle free recoil, this is what happens. And so that's what I did. I was like, whoa, that can't just be from hold. Tried it again, boom, yes, it did happen again. Got a gorilla hold on it again and our group shrank. So that's what you see. Hold, tight hold, loose, loose, gorilla hold again, okay? And so going forward, I held it as tight as I could. I did play with it a couple different ways, like does it like pulling in more? Does it like different ratios? So there will be slight differences, but ultimately I, I, I found a good, good way to hold it. So um, I did some averages here. So Ely Subsonic had an average of uh, 0.702 but some of these were due to a loose hold and it certainly would have been like that I would probably figure the other two if I'd helped it would be about there so I'd probably say it's about a half inch okay pretty consistent the ammo too otherwise I shot some others that I don't have here but it was very good its favorite ammo before when I tested from for for uh, apertures was Ely Contact as you can see that's a phenomenal group um, and then this one next this one was due, honestly, because I had so many light strikes, like one after another with Ely Contact. I was getting so irritated that this group suffered. And then I was so mad I didn't shoot any more Ely Contact. I didn't waste the ammo because it was I couldn't get it to ignite. Then I switched to SK Standard Plus, and I think in this four shot group here, I had one light strike, maybe two, but I think it was one. And the average is 0.437. So some pretty nice groups there. Can't argue with that. Then I switched to CCI standard velocity, which opened up slightly with the you know the typical CCI flyers, but some pretty respectable groups in there as well. Average was 0.552. So like you know, let's say this gun is I would say a sub half inch shooter at at, at 50 with ammo that it likes on this page, and um, I had no light strikes with standard velocity. So then, because, uh, you know, Ely was a bust, I broke out what I had in my range bag, which was some CCI AR and some CCI Blazer, because, you know, I shoot that in my Schultz and Larson, and so I usually always have it in my range bag, so I pulled out some of that. And let me tell you, I wasn't really prepared for this, but I'll, I'll, I'll say that if you guys remember the Savage TR video, the Savage, its favorite ammo for testing was the CCI Blazer. I got some in the point threes. And so I shot a full page of that stuff. Um, actually, I shot three lines of the CCI AR with a 0.383 average. And one of them was point, sorry, this is Blazer actually, 0.86 with the Blazer, 0.268 with AR, 0.288 with AR. Absolutely shocking groups. 0.313 over here. So Blazer's average was 0 0.403 and AR's was 0 0.383. So the reason I want to say that and I bring it up here is that the winners of the day, the smallest group sizes and averages, were these high velocity ammunitions, beating semi-premium ammunition, or at the very least keeping up with the one premium ammunition, this Ely Contact that I tested which is, I guess, semi-premium, but here it's, you know, it's on the price-wise of being premium. But I can't discount this. And I had no failures to ignite, extract, eject with this high-velocity ammunition. So this begs the question, right? Like, this is like my Schultz and Larson. Why, I don't know, but the, the, the Savage TR is like that as well. I've had several Savages that are very accurate with high-velocity budget ammunition. However, the results usually fall apart at 100, which is another problem all in it and it's so but anyway i can't have anything but a smile on my face looking at groups like that so for me the winner of the day was cci ar again just like in the schultz and larson if you remember to just slightly edge to cci uh, blazer in my testing when i um when i tried it in the schultz and larson with very similar groups so this lakefield 
target rifle from the 90s basically kept up with the Schultz and Larson with a loophole scope and a one ounce trigger and that uh, that this Lakefield has nothing like a one ounce trigger so it's kind of given me something to think about which is why I'm not upset at all about the light strikes something I got to investigate because improved firing pin spraying ignition would improve groups even more more positive ignition so I am absolutely blown away with these groups. Uh, I'm super excited. I got to do some more testing. Definitely gonna have to test this ammo at 100 now. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna kind of think on it today and decide what my next uh, action will be, but it's probably going to be uh, rebuilding that bolt with new parts and picking up some more different kinds of high velocity. I know SK has a high velocity and Ely has a high velocity. I might have some of the Ely high velocity. I'm gonna have to look, but I'd like to try those and see because perhaps uh, perhaps the rifle likes high velocity, which is a possibility, and um, go from there. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching, and uh, the start of this video was kind of weird and missing out in the range and all that, but today paid off. I'm really glad I went back to the range. I'm really glad I um, shot what I did today because I learned a lot. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Any questions or comments, leave them below, and I'll catch you the next one.